COVID-19, why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. I have no toilet paper, I don't even have a snack. Hey, coronavirus, I want my life back. Well, hello from my bedroom. That's where we are today. Uh, we are talking about sleep today, so what better place to be than in bed? Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Monday evening. Is everybody having fun in isolation? One of the big problems we've had w that, that you've been telling me about is the fact that um, you're not getting good sleeps. Some of you have even been complaining about nightmares. So I want to uh, bring someone on board right now who is a sleep expert. I always thought I was a sleep expert, but uh, <laughs> how are you? Alana again is uh, joining me right now. Alana, tell me a little bit about yourself. Oh, thanks for having me. So my name is Alana McGinn. Uh, my company is Goodnight Sleep Site. We are a family uh, sleep coaching practice. So we work with babies to adults um, and helping them sleep better. Um, we have a team of over 20, both Canada and the U.S., um, and we work on sleep coaching and sleep guidance, especially at this time, uh, to help everyone sleep well. And when you're, when you're coaching someone, how successful are you in, in helping them get, uh, get sleep? I would say pretty successful. I mean, we definitely work depending on the situation. We customize plans and put them together. Um, and provided, you know, everyone's consistent in following those plans, um, it, works, it can work really, really well. So with uh, what's going on right now with COVID-19, uh, it, it's adding to the stress level. People don't know what's going to happen. We're getting to the end of the month as well. So there's a lot of rents that are due as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of worries. So when it comes to, to isolation, are there, are there unique problems, th things unique to this? Well, I, in terms of sleep, I think what we're seeing now is, you know, people are obviously having a hard time sleeping now just due to the stress and anxiety, exactly what you were just saying. I mean, you know, the coronavirus in itself, uh, but then also, you know, financial um, issues. And we're worried about our kids. You know, a lot of us are home with our kids and schooling and all of that um, can cause issues. So we're definitely seeing an increase in anxiety and stress. But then we're also seeing a lack of routine. You know, many of us now are working from home. Our kids are home from school. So, you know, bedtimes maybe aren't such a focus right now. And wait times aren't such a focus in terms of normally our, our wait time is, is dependent on. Aren't as uh, structured and consistent. Um, and that in itself can, can uh, hinder our sleep for sure. Okay. So you have, well, let's get right to some tips right now, and then we'll answer some questions. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, so you have, you've brought along five tips that That's could right. help improve people's sleep. And when we improve people's sleep, we're improving their physical well-being. We're improving their mental well-being as well, right? That's right. I mean, definitely for mental well-being, but you know, now, uh, you know, more and more professionals are stating that, you know, to boost your immune system and to be as healthy as we can be, you know, sleep and nutrition need to be prioritized and really need to be a focus. So now more than ever, when we're all trying to stay healthy, um, is a great time to really focus on that sleep for sure. Uh, someone says, uh, thank God for melatonin for my sleep hygiene. My anxiety gives me insomnia. Sucks when I have to work. I have a hard time falling asleep. Wake up an hour or two earlier before my alarm. And I start asleep right. at 6 a.m., says, says Nathaniel. Now, a lot of people swear by melatonin. What do you think of it? So here's my issue with melatonin is, is I think that there definitely are those that can benefit from it. Um, you know, we all, melatonin is a natural sleep hormone. Um, one that we aren't necessarily deficient in. So I think it can work really well for individuals who, um, who have any kind of circadian rhythm disorders. A lot of people who travel, you're going through time zones, things like that, they can work really well. But for the most part, we want to work on um, releasing our natural melatonin using the, ex our, the external factors around us. So that's simply darkening up the room, um, you know, using things like that to help kind of release that melatonin naturally in itself. So 
if you're looking to include a supplement to kind of help uh, calm your mind, calm your body and help you prepare to sleep, I prefer the other M, which is magnesium. That is a great thing because there actually is a large deficiency. Canadians have been shown to have a large deficiency in uh, magnesium. That could be a great supplement to introduce into your day-to-day supplements. I would say more so than magnesium, actually. Okay, let's get to some of these tips right now. And we'll start off with, uh, with number one here. Audit your sleep space. What do you mean by that? So this is a great time. I mean, especially the fact that we're stuck in our homes. Um, But given the season also that we're going into, I always say spring is a great time to give your bedroom uh, a spring clean um, and really set it up for sleep. Our bedroom really should be for sleep only. So it's really important to develop a positive relationship between sleep and uh, our bedroom and our bed. And a great way to do that is by making sure that when we go into our bedroom, we're just sleeping. So a lot of us, you know, in the winter months, especially now being quarantined in our bedrooms, our bedrooms are becoming kind of a catch-all, right? It's becoming our home office, it's becoming our gym, Mm -hmm. it's becoming our kids' play center. So we really want to clear out that clutter um, and really just set up that sleep sanctuary. You might even have to go as far as switching out your bed sheets. You know, evenings are getting warmer now uh, with the warmer months coming in, thank goodness. Um, So just simply, you know, putting on... um, different bedding you know if you use your flannels that winter maybe it's time to put on your spring bedding maybe changing your thicker duvet for a thinner blanket anything that's going to help kind of regulate your body temperature a little bit better when you're sleeping um so really set up that sleep space um to be as inviting for sleep as possible because that's going to actually help you fall asleep a lot easier and sleep a lot better okay let's get to our next tip um structured sleep schedule and we've been doing a lot of talking with experts over the last couple of weeks that it really does help your stress levels when there's structure, when there's routine. So I guess that's no different when it comes to sleep. No, absolutely. And it's actually one of the steps of sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene is the steps and practices an individual can take to sleep better. And the number one step, in my opinion, is having that consistent schedule. And now, given what we're going through, it's so hard to do um, because schedules are all over the place. Mm -hmm. But now that we're kind of entering week three, right, really, um, I think this is a great time to maybe get back on track in terms of routine. If you've fallen off the wagon a little bit, and it's understandable if you have, we have at my house as well. But now it's, you know, it's important to kind of bring back those bedtimes for our kids for ourselves you know you don't necessarily have to set your alarm to wake up but if you want to just you know wake up maybe a little bit earlier because really our goal in waking up in the morning is building that drive to sleep so it helps us it helps it easier for us to fall asleep at night so if we're sleeping in a lot during the day we're not able to build up enough drive to sleep to help us fall asleep a lot easier at night um so this is a great time to set those consistent patterns so follow what we call the 80 20 rule 80% of the time, be as consistent as you can be with, you know, consistent bedtimes, consistent wait times. 20% of the time, you know, bedtime's too late one night, not a big deal. If you want to sleep in a little bit, no worries. But, you know, try and be as consistent as you can with timings because that will, in turn, help you fall asleep and even wake up a lot easier in the morning. Okay, number three, uh, step away from the screens. We hear this a lot. I know, Uh, and it's so hard. Blue light. Uh, And we're not just talking about your phone. We're talking about other things as well. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. There's there's two reasons why nowadays, especially in what we're going through now, we need to be stepping away from the screens. One, as you mentioned, is the blue light, it's the bright light. I always say, you know, picture your brain having a sleep switch, right? So when we're in front of that bright light, because a lot of people will say, well, I can fall asleep great to the TV or I fall asleep great after checking my phone, you know, checking social media before I go to sleep. You can fall asleep, but you're turning that sleep switch off in your brain because you're in front of that bright light. So therefore, your brain actually thinks that you should be awake. So it's not just the quantity of sleep that we should be getting, but we also need to be factoring in the quality of sleep that we should be getting. Um, And if we're falling asleep uh, in front of those bright screens, we're not able to get that deep restorative sleep because even though we're sleeping, we're still our brain is still thinking that we should be awake. So for that reason alone, we should be stepping away constantly over overloaded I feel in really high stressful information right now yeah. um, and I definitely think that's playing a well, role in people's <clears throat> stress and anxiety what what I've been telling people too is you know turn off the news and turn off the news yeah. on your social feeds as well so if you're going to watch the news I guess because you should you should keep up to date with what's going on but, absolutely but at yeah. the same time 
how many hours before should you really start preparing for sleep? And that is, that means turning off the news. Yeah. And, you know, I say give yourself that 60 minute tech curfew, what we call a tech curfew. So if you can 60 minutes before you go to bed, 90 minutes, if you can do it. And this goes for all ages. I mean, this is for our kids as well. There's a lot of more screen time with our kids as well, given what we're doing. Uh, I'm a parent of three, so I'm not going to tell parents to limit screen time for their kids because <laughs> I know how hard it is right now. So I'm not going to be that person. But you can still give that tech curfew um, and set those tech boundaries at bedtime. And like you said, it's important for us to stay up to date. Absolutely. But choose, you know, two or three sources that you trust, that you check in on. You don't need to read everything. You don't need to, you know, now's even a good time if you have to mute some people, if you have temporarily, if you have to unfollow. Like, make sure the, the information that's coming into you is helpful, right? Uh, I just was reading a comment here from Sharon off to the side, uh, and, and she's saying, since the passing of my husband, I haven't been able to sleep unless there is light in my room and the TV right. has to be on. I need to hear the voices. Tried everything. Nothing seems to help. I do know people who prefer to sleep with the television on. Can you break yourself of that habit? And Sharon, our thoughts are, are with you. And, and I love this because somebody else commented he would want you to take care of yourself. Remember that. So, yeah. I mean, the people who are watching right now are taking care of each other. I love that. Um, but, but, you know, can you break yourself of that habit or should you break yourself of that habit? Here's the thing. I think given, you know, with Sharon's example, given what she's gone through and then given what we're going through right now, the main priority right now is staying as healthy as we can stay. And if, you know, listening to the TV to sleep and if having the lights on to sleep is going to help you get that healthy sleep, then I'm not going to tell you to stop doing that. You can break yourself from any habit. Absolutely. For individuals who need sound and noises to sleep, there's a lot of great apps out there. There's a lot of great, um, there's, you know, when I say stay away from tech, there's also a lot of tech that really can help. Things like white noise, things like sound machines, things like different apps, calming apps, meditative apps um, that can really kind of help you sleep better. So, you know, if you're trying to break yourself from, say, a habit like listening to the TV and hearing those voices, maybe kind of transition into one of those apps and that can kind of slowly help you. But in this day, like what we're going through right now, do what you can do to get a good night's sleep. And that is OK. Absolutely. Other people are piping up saying that they that they have the TV on as well. Is, is there are we doing something wrong? Are we doing something bad to ourselves by having noise on all night long? Well, I mean, you want to it's, it's better to have a consistent sound than a sound that's kind of going in different variable variables. Um, so I would prefer more consistent sound because that's actually going to help you reach each sleep cycle and transition to each sleep sleep cycle um, better. Um, but like I said, nowadays, if, if having the TV on is going to help, it can help, um, you know, best case scenario. remove phones, tablets, remote controls, all of that tech really should be coming out of the bedroom. No. Sorry, guys. I know no one likes to hear that, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's how I made my living. Don't tell people to get rid of that. <laughs> okay, let's get to tip. Uh, we were on tip number three, right? So let's get to uh, tip number four. Here we go. Uh, stay active. Okay, what do you mean by stay active? I thought we were trying to calm down. Well, that's it. But, you know, when I mentioned before, building up that drive for sleep, a great way to do that is by staying active. And now because we are stuck so much and we're so isolated and stuck inside, um, we're not able to get into that physical activity. And physical, when we look at the three pillars of health, we're looking at sleep, nutrition and exercise. And really, those three pillars uh, work with each other. So it's important to incorporate at least 30 minutes of daily exercise, um, even if it's just getting out for, you know, a nice family walk walking the dog my dog has never had so many walks <laughs> yeah, a lot of dogs nice have. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna be in such our dogs are gonna be in such great shape when this is all done um but getting out for family walks moving your body moving your legs there's so much this is where again tech can really help us actually there's so many great exercise apps and so many people are coming together and so many different resources are being put together to keep us active in our home and when we're burning out that energy when we're staying active that's actually going to help us fall asleep a lot easier so start small You've never exercised before. You're not used to going for daily walks. Start little, five minutes, 10 minutes, and every day try and increase it. Catherine has a good suggestion here. You can set your Google to calming music, then tell it to turn off in an hour. And I think I think I can get Alexa to do that yeah. as well. 
Uh, and, Absolutely. And, uh, there are some apps actually that will turn off after a while. So I, I very much encourage that. Mike brings up a very good point too. And, and I suffer from this. I think a lot of people do. And that is that overactive mind. You're thinking yes. too much and you just can't yeah. stop it. Right. And this brings us to, to the fifth, our fifth point is, is mindful thinking and, and kind of meditative thought and how to quiet the, the, the brain. This is probably one of the biggest um, issues that I hear from people that come to me is, you know, and you were saying it earlier on the show, um, you know, when they wake up and they're waking up two hours before the, their alarm goes off and their brain just gets flooded. Um, so what are some techniques that we can kind of use to help quiet our mind? So there is, there are things like mindful breathing. Actually, I'm a, I'm a huge um, fan of mindful breathing. There's a lot of different mindful breathing techniques that you can incorporate and the, that you can learn um, that work best for you. And this can actually be incorporated not just at bedtime or in the middle of the night, but also during the day. Um, and it's just different techniques that help kind of calm your, your body down and, and calm your brain down and allow your body to relax. Um, quiet some of that stress and anxiety that you might be feeling. Um, and this is where journaling can come in handy as well. And I don't mean journaling in terms of, you know, writing out all your thoughts and feelings, but just what are your worries? What are your concerns? What are you trying to work through? You know, give yourself that brain dump before you go to bed so that when you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning, um, your brain isn't flooded with everything that, you know, you have to do or you have to work on or issues that are, pro or, or problems that are bothering you. What happens at bedtime, time is we are so distracted during the day that we tend to kind of push all of our anxiety um, down. Mm -hmm. And then when we go to bed, the distractions are gone. And that's when everything floods, right? So give yourself also time throughout the day. I call them personal pauses where you're allowing yourself to just sit down and give thought to what you need to give thought to. So even if that is to stress, to worry. We're human. I'm not going to tell you not to stress and worry because you're going to stress and worry, but put boundaries on it during the day so that you're not going to then flood it at night when you're trying to go to sleep. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go to a couple of these. Um, uh, oh yeah. Mona, I always wake up within 60 to 90 minutes after I fall asleep. What, what's going on? Um, I'd be curious to know more about her day to day, more about when she's going to bed, maybe perhaps what she's doing to, to, uh, before she goes to bed. Also, um, is she drinking before she goes to bed? I'm sure she's not drinking a lot. I just mean even a glass of wine or mm -hmm. two glasses of wine. Is she eating before she goes to bed? So the reason why I ask those questions is we really should be limiting uh, big meals uh, at least four hours before we go to sleep. Because what we don't want is we don't want our body busy digesting um, when it should be busy working on, on good sleep. So try to avoid any kind of heavy meals right before you go to bed. And also a lot of people, you know, will have a glass of wine before they go to bed or throughout the night. Um, and yes, it can help. A lot of people say, well, that helps me relax. It helps me fall asleep. It can, but then what actually happens is as the alcohol is leaving your body, it can cause more fragmented sleep. So therefore you sleep more restlessly throughout the night. So um, I would need to know more about maybe what's going on. But an another thing that you would want to look at too is her body temperature. Is she overheating? Um, is she too cold? Does she need to add a blanket? Does she need to take a blanket off? Does she need to change bedding? Um, again, while we don't want our body busy, our body being too busy digesting, we also don't want our body too busy trying to regulate its heat. We really just want it focusing on sleep. So making sure that the environment in which we're sleeping is really customized to what we need. Lots of people over the last few days have been telling me that they are having nightmares yeah. regarding COVID. Yeah. And obviously that's coming from the newscast. It's coming from uncertainty, even in your own personal situation. Is there anything you can do I know you can't stop them, but is there anything you do to slow them down or mitigate them somewhat? Absolutely. I mean, this, again, goes back to, you know, limiting the amount of information that you're taking in throughout the day. While we do need to be informed, I think it's important to really set boundaries. I actually put this um, question out to my community this week saying, you know, what have you done to really help you um, in terms of being more, making sure that your mind, you're, you're not doing a negative mind, mind shift. 
Um, and one of my uh, followers said to me, and I, I this stays with me now, she says, you know, before I click on anything, I always say, is this information helpful to me? Do I need to know this information? And I think that's a really great, uh, great thing to think because you don't need to click and read everything. So definitely watch what you're reading and watch how much you're taking in. But then also fact check, you know, it's normal for us to have worries and concerns with everything that's going on. But then, you know, just sit down with yourself and say, okay, am I doing everything to stay healthy, to be as preventative as I can be? Um, you know, going through doing that fact checking can actually help ease some of your anxieties and some of your fears. Don't be shy also about saying them out loud, you know, talking to someone, have someone that can be that source point for you um, where you can touch in and talk to them. Sometimes just saying our fears out loud can alleviate some of those, um, some of those fears. So definitely I, I, I always know for me, fact checking really helps in making sure that I'm doing everything to um, alleviate any kind of stress or anxiety that I'm feeling. And then that can in turn play into the nightmares that you're having and how you're sleeping throughout the night for sure. Uh, a few people are piping in. They're asking the question. I think they're just joining us now about the temperature in your room. I like it nice and cool in the yes. room. We also, I, th I feel that we all do sleep better in a cooler environment. Um, you're looking at anywhere between 69 and 72 degrees. So I believe that's 19 to 23, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, so, I mean, it, it definitely depends on the individual. Um, but I, I do believe that we all sleep better in a cooler environment. It doesn't have to be freezing cold. Um, but again, we don't want our body overheating. That's when we can tend to wake up a lot more. Uh, we also though don't want our body to be too cold because if our body um, gets too cold, then that's going to force us to wake up as well to as our body's trying to busy trying to heat up. So, you know, choose a temperature that you're comfortable using. It's harder when you share a room, for sure, when you have two people sleeping in the same room because everyone has a different comfort level on what they need and we all have our own personal sleep needs. But that's where I say you can also customize your bed, your side of the bed to what you need. So whether that be in terms of what you're wearing to bed, whether that be what kind of pillow you're using, what kind of bedding you're using, because you share a bed doesn't mean you can't have separate blankets. So maybe your partner likes a thicker blanket, but you tend to overheat a lot more. I'm looking at all the women out there, um, you know, with all <laughs> the night sweats and the night heat. Um, I can say this because I am one. Oh, I just. Um, you, know, you might need a thinner blanket. So just because you share a bed doesn't mean that you can can't customize your side to what works best for you. Um, here's a very interesting question from Betty. I was prescribed prescription sleeping pills years ago. I'm now hooked. Can't sleep without them. Okay. Currently under a lot of stress. I need my sleep. I'm concerned, though, about long-term effects. Any advice? Um, I mean, this is... A I'm not a doctor, so I can't really touch on uh, prescription medication that much, uh, but that is definitely a conversation worth having with your doctor. And we're seeing that more to more, uh, more and more, more people being um, really hooked on, on uh, sleeping pills and prescriptions. Um, I, I mean, as a, as a professional, I am just a coach. So that's really a question that I would have to refer her to her doctor to have that conversation. But if she's getting to what can happen with prescription um, drugs is the more you take it, take them, your body actually just gets used to them. So then you need to take I've more. Heard that, I've heard that about switch. Um, and it's just kind of a. I've heard that about yeah, melatonin. Sorry, I've heard that about melatonin as well. That if you take it too long, that you, that's right. Yeah. Your body just gets used to it, right? Your body gets used to that amount. So, um, if she's interested in kind of weaning off and taking different uh, a different alternative, uh, that would definitely be a conversation to have with the doctor, and then they would probably give her the right steps. But if you're if you're taking them and you don't want to be taking them, you don't have to be taking them. There's other routes to take other than prescription drugs for sure. All right, a uh, lot of questions about weighted blankets now. Uh, if you're not, yes. if you don't know what a weighted blanket is, it's basically just that it's, it's a heavy, heavy blanket. Yeah. It's, it is apparently very good for, uh, a stress and anxiety. What's your thought on the weighted blankets? I think weighted blankets are a great sleep tool that is very, I don't want to say new to the market, but they're definitely becoming more and more popular. We're seeing them promoted everywhere. And it, it is actually a product that I, I feel like I can positively talk about. 
Um, I think that they're great. And and so basically what it is, for those that don't know what a weighted blanket is, is they're, they're normally weighted pellets within a blanket that's evenly distributed throughout the blanket to give you that weight. Um, for adults, you're looking at anywhere between five to, I believe it's five to 20% or five to 10, five to 10 or 15% of your body weight is what you would want to get. Uh, and what it does is it works with our serotonin levels and that weight can um, release our serotonin, which uh, can calm the the body down, can reduce heart rate, can uh, calm our mind down. So they, they can be work used very well, especially in this day and age. They can be really great. A lot of kids are using them as well. Um, so I'm a fan. They're not for everybody. They do take time to get used to. So don't think if you get one the first night, you should be sleeping like a baby. It normally takes about a week or so to get used to it. But they are weighted. So keep that in mind when you are buying them. They're heavy. Um, what about if I, okay, I go to sleep, or I go to bed. I'm lying there. I can't sleep. I've heard conflicting stories. Just let it happen. That's okay. Or get up. What do you do? Yeah. I love that you asked that question because that's such a, it's such a common question that I get. I always say you, we, we should be sleeping 85% of the time that we are in bed. Because again, we want to build that positive relationship between bed and sleep. So if we're tossing and turning and if we're clock watching and doing all those things, which we've all been guilty of, um, we're starting to develop a negative association between bed and our sleep. So it's okay to get out of bed, do a quiet activity. Don't check your email. Don't turn on every light. Don't turn on the TV. Um, but do a quiet activity like in, you know, dim light, maybe reading a few chapters of a book or a few pages of a book. I'm um, doing a puzzle, any kind of quiet activity that you can do and then try again. So 10 or 15 minutes, do your activity. Try to get into bed again. If you're still struggling, get out of bed again. And you might have to do that a few times each night. Um, but the more you do it, the easier it's actually going to be to fall asleep. So if you can't sleep, it's okay to get out of bed and then try again. Philip says, I haven't slept in four years. I have a four-year-old. <laughs> so yeah. I can understand <laughs> that. You hear that a lot, Philip. Lots of <laughs> questions about aromatherapy and lavender spray. Uh, a lot of people use lavender spray, spray it on their pillows, on their sheets, the aromatherapy. What, what do you think of that? I think that these are all, again, it's all great tools to create that environment to sleep. So I do think that there are scents like lavender, um, like different uh, aromatherapy oils that you can use to kind of create that inviting and that calming and relaxing environment. I don't think that they are the be all and end all. And just by spraying some lavender spray on your pillow, you're going to miraculously fall asleep and sleep great forever. I do think sleeping well are normally lifestyle habits that we need to change and be consistent with it. But I do think that they're a great thing, like a weighted blanket that we can incorporate um, on top of doing certain things like maintaining a consistent schedule, incorporating daily um, exercise that will help us sleep better for sure. Someone, someone's talking here about taking a nice bath and of course that'll help relax you. What, what's yeah. your thought on a shower before bed? Is that going to wake you up? Uh, it depends on the person. Um, you know, some people are more sensitive to, to baths or showers than others. It's actually a great way to cool down. I know that you would think that that would be strange if you're taking a warm bath, but when you get out of the bath, your body can cool. So if you're looking to cool down before you go to sleep, it can be a great way to do that. Um, it could be a great relaxing um, activity to incorporate at bedtime for sure. And I think some for some people it can work really well, provided you're doing everything else also. You know, we're, you're then getting out of the bath and going into a nice, relaxing and calming sleep environment. Um, it can work well, but you don't have to. And I, I say this to, to the parents that are also watching this who have little kids. I know often we say, you know, give a bath at bedtime. You know, bath time doesn't have to be included at bedtime. You can still have a nice, relaxing and calming bedtime routine, which is important for all ages. You don't necessarily have to have a bath in there. So it's really up to the person. Yeah, and, and I get, but I guess a lot of times too, because we have spoke earlier about routine, bath time mm -hmm. becomes a bit of a routine. So in that case, yeah. it, it may actually be, uh, be helping. What about those who work 24 seven on call, uh, people who get sleep broken uh, in addition to anxiety and stress? That's from uh, Gina. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the shift work community is definitely a growing community. It's one that we work a lot with. Um, we work, we try and work a lot with the employers to incorporate different plans and different um, policies for, for the employees to help them sleep better. When you're working against your natural body clock, 
it can be a lot harder to get that deep restorative sleep that we were talking about, even though you're still getting that quantity. Mm -hmm. But it, it is what it is. You have to sleep. So you can still incorporate good, healthy sleep habits, just sleeping at different times throughout the day. So this is, I always say, this is a conversation worth having with your family to make sure that your sleep time is being as protected as it can be, especially if you're sleeping during the day and your family is awake, um, awake during the day and you're trying to sleep throughout the day really incorporating that good um, conducive sleep environment. So darkening up the room as best you can, incorporating things like white noise can work really well. Um, and one tip that I always give to my shift workers that tends to really go well and they, they tend to understand is form a community within yourselves of shift workers um, because it's, it can be a very lonely and isolating feeling to be sleeping when the rest of the world is awake. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're talking to other people, um, that are in the same boat as you, not only can you share tips on what works for you, but just having that understanding um, can actually go a long way, for sure. Okay, now we've heard about warm milk. Does warm milk work? Um, I think it's, it's, it's a bit of a myth in terms of warm, you know, have a cup of warm milk before you go to bed. I mean, that's not going to help you fall asleep, but there's a comfort level to it. So if you're drinking it for that, it can provide that comfort, relaxing feeling. Um, but it's not, there isn't anything magical in it. That's going to make you drowsy and fall asleep. No. Uh, okay. Also someone was saying pistachios, <laughs> bananas, and warm milk. That's from Michelle. She's heard that. She wants to know if that means anything. Yeah, there are some uh, foods that you can incorporate into like bedtime snacks, we call them. So things that focus on obviously whole foods, whole grains, um, even dairy. So things like, um, you know, a bit of yogurt with granola or some crackers and peanut butter. Um, think, you know, we want to obviously stay away from anything with caffeine, anything spicy, any kind of sugars and sweets. Um, but having some, you know, having a, a banana um having a bowl of um of almonds um or pumpkin seeds i mean these are all things that you can incorporate before you go to sleep um that can actually help kind of um maintain your blood level sugar your uh, blood level um sugar your sugar i'm saying that wrong your blood sugar levels um and actually help you maintain good restful sleep throughout the night now someone uh, michelle says i generally fall asleep right away but don't stay asleep. Wake up several yeah. times a night. Yeah. And I mean, there could be different reasons why that is. Again, it comes back to, is she eating something before she goes to bed? Is she drinking before she goes to bed? Does she need to eat something uh, before she goes to bed that's going to help maintain those blood sugar levels? You know, if we're seeing a, a, a flux and a, um, a dip in them, that can force our body to wake up. Um, so I would need to know more information as to what is her overall sleep hygiene to kind of, um, you know, give her tips on how on how to stay asleep. Um, but just focusing if we're looking at the steps of sleep hygiene, focusing on consistent sleep patterns, a great routine, which you've talked about a great bedtime routine, avoiding tech, avoiding big meals before she goes to sleep and working in some great daily activity that in itself can help her sleep a lot better for sure. Okay, well, you know what we're going to do? I want to, because I know a lot of people are just joining us. I want to go through the tips very quickly, and I'll just let you yeah. comment on them as, as we do it. So let's let's start with the first one here, and that was audit your sleep space. Yes, yeah, so we want to definitely audit our sleep space. Uh, this is a great time to kind of clear the clutter of the bedroom and really focus on creating a sleep environment that is conducive to sleep that is going to provide a calming feeling of sleep. So, um, you know, we're also going into a, a season where mornings are a lot brighter and evenings are a lot lighter. So things, installing things like blackout blinds, white noise machine can really work well on kind of blocking out those external morning noises that tend to be a lot louder this time of year. Um, <clears throat> and really, you know, creating our, make sure we're creating the right bedding and the right um, items that we have in our bed for the season. So perhaps, you know, taking off your big winter duvet and putting on a nice uh, thinner blanket um, and just really creating that sleep sanctuary in your bedroom. Okay, next one, uh, structured sleep schedule. Yes, so nowadays, especially with what we're going through with um, COVID-19, routines are kind of out the window because we're home. So now I, I always say, you know, going into now week three, this is a great time to really just start getting back to consistent routines. Even if we're going to, you know, work from home the next day and our kids don't have school, 
try and keep that consistent bedtime, try and keep uh, that consistent wake time in the morning, because that in turn will actually help us fall asleep a lot easier and help us sleep a lot better throughout the night. So start getting back to a normal day to day routine that your your family normally does when things are normal in the outside world. Step, step away from the screens. Yes. Yeah, so now is a great time to kind of turn off that tech, give yourself that tech curfew 60 minutes before bed. If you can do it, uh, really try and turn off those bright screens and stay away from tech. One is we want to get away from those bright screens so that our brain isn't tricked into thinking that it should be awake. So we're not able to get that good restful sleep. Um, and another reason is just, you know, all the information that we are constantly um, being kind of thrown in front of our face, going what we're going through with the coronavirus. Uh, now is a great time to Limit the tech that we're reading. Give yourself those tech boundaries. Um, you know, five minutes a day. Choose the sources that you trust and just stick to those so that we're not reading everything. What about those night screens that are offered now on phones? Yeah, those can work great. I mean, listen, in a perfect world, I would love everyone to not have tech in their bedroom. We have a family docking station in our in our home where all of our family members who have phones and devices plug in overnight, keeps everything out of the bedroom, keeps everything clear and clutter free. Um, if you can't do that and you need to have your phone in your bedroom, there are great, um, you know, Apple has a, uh, a bedtime uh, screen on their phone for your computer. There's a great <clears throat> app called Flux that you can download on, on, your, um, on your laptop. Um, so there are things that you can do, but the best thing to do would be to clear it all out altogether. Okay, stay active. Yes, we have to keep our bodies moving. That is so important, especially given the fact that we are inside so much right now. So even <clears throat> provided you are, you know, following the rules and keeping your, you know, your uh, proper distance away from everybody, go outside for a daily walk. If you can do it, make it a family event, go outside with the family, go for a nice family walk. There's a lot of great resources that are available to us now with tech, even though some, you know, I say turn off tech, there's a lot of tech that's really going to help us right now. Um, a lot of great yoga and exercise apps and stuff that you can download just to keep that 30 minutes of daily activity going to help build our drive to sleep throughout the night. Okay. And finally, build time for mindfulness. Very important. So important. I mean, given day to day, everything that we're, we're going through now, we need to quiet our mind and we need to learn different techniques to do that. So there's things like mindful breathing. There's some great, again, some great apps out there that you guys can use for our kids. There is Headspace, which is a great one. And that could be for all ages. Um, for adults, a great one that I love is the Calm app. Um, it's a great meditative app. It, it guides you through different. So if you've never meditated before, it'll guide you through different uh, meditations. Um, it's a great learning tool that you can incorporate. Um, things like journaling, you know, writing out your thoughts and your worries and your concerns before you go to bed so it's not kind of flooding your brain um, when you should be sleeping. Um, all of these different things can really help kind of quiet the mind a little bit at night. Okay. Um, Alana is a, um, a sleep coach. Uh, she uh, will come to your place while you're sleeping and she will yell at you from the sidelines uh, and, and keep you asleep. <laughs> Uh, but let's let's talk. I just want to I want to give your website a plug. Tell me about goodnightsleepsite.com. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. So yes, you can find more information at goodnightsleepsite.com. We have a lot of great articles um, and resources there for for from babies to adults. I also have a podcast called This Girl Loves Sleep. You can download that anywhere that you download podcasts. And there's a lot of great episodes on different uh, sleep issues over there. Um, and then you can follow me on social as well. Well, on Instagram, it's GN Sleep Site, and on Facebook, it's Goodnight Sleep Site. Oh, this has been fantastic. Uh, I know that I, I, I can see by the reaction that you had some great tips. Um, oh, we'll, good. We'll have you on again if that's okay. If you'll join us again, I would love to. Absolutely. And we can we can talk about even more concerns that uh, people may have. I'll be collecting some of the comments. So thank you very much for this, Alana. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having. Me. All right. Alana, Alana, um, again, talking to us uh, this morning or this morning, uh, this evening. I'm used to working morning TV. Uh, Alana talking to us and uh, some fantastic advice. I cannot emphasize to you enough how important sleep is. Sleep is everything. It is a chance for our bodies to regenerate, um, to, to rest, to recuperate and to deal with stress. And so what chance do you have if you're all stressed, you're not sleeping, 
and then you wake up, well, you wake up after a horrible sleep and you're more stressed. So you've got to do what you yeah. can to get the stress out of your life. I need you, I, I, this is so important. Turn off the news, please, and turn off your news feeds. Filter that. Don't, don't keep bombarding yourself with all the bad news and all the things about COVID. I warned you, things are going to get worse. We're not to the point where we're flattening the curve yet. Things are going to get worse. So yeah, I would inform yourself in the morning, maybe early afternoon, that's it. And then turn it off for the rest of the day. And don't watch it, don't watch it constantly. The, the one thing, while, while news organizations, um, are, you know, are, are hopefully most of them are honorable and credible, we had a saying, if it bleeds, it leads. And so bad news is accentuated. It can be sensationalized. It's brought to the forefront. So, yeah, if, if, if the news is going to keep repeating over and over all the bad stuff that's going that, that that's happening. So do yourself a favor, de-stress before you go to bed. Later on this week, Winston is going to be with me. Winston C. Uh, he's going to be oh, hold on. He's going to be talking about tech. Uh, and how it can help you out in different apps and, and games. Uh, so I want to thank Alana for being on with me uh, tonight. Uh, yes, my eye is looking much better. Thank you, Phyllis, for that. Finally, finally, that was horrible. That was horrible. Uh, and uh, yes, people are commenting on the, the, the leg lamp. There you go, right beside Jimmy. There you are. So that's it for uh, today's show. Uh, if, if you're new to the show, what we're doing is this is all about positivity. And it's about giving you coping mechanisms to get us through this isolation and get us through together. Remember that we're all in this together. So please take care of yourself and um, take care of, uh, of everybody else as well. Uh, my email address, uh, firstaidforyourmentalhealth at gmail.com. And you can watch any episodes you've missed on my YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash Kevin Frankish channel. Have a great one, everyone. We'll talk to you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, same bat channel, same bat time. COVID-19, why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. Paper, I don't even have a snack. Hey, coronavirus, I want my life back. Well, hey, coronavirus, I want my life back. Well,